It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Okay, we have a question from Houston. He says, my wife and I are in our late 20s and saving about 35%, which is fantastic. Mm. We have not maxed out our 401k or 403b accounts. But with our current savings rate, should we move on to step seven of the financial order of operations? Step seven is that hyper accumulation phase where you get some more complexity in your investing. What should they do? Well, actually, they might. Houston might already be there with with his significant other and the, his spouse. And the fact that because let me a little story time here. We were speaking to this engineering group. There was this um, really fascinating company that we got hired to come in and talk to. It was all engineers. They deal with like structural concrete. And all the people were just brilliant. You could just tell these are top of the class type people. And, and this company was big enough that they actually not only they have like a planning retreat, like or a state of the union type thing, where they have all their new employees, meaning employees that are only been there for a year or two. They not only try to give you good educational things in their industry, but they try to bring in speakers like us to talk about, you know, how to manage your money as you build wealth and, and do that well. I, I thought it was a really great 360 approach um, that employers ought to copy yeah. and, and use because it's really noble to not only help people have a successful career track, but also make sure they maximize their opportunities. But I will never forget, we're talking about the financial order of operations. And I, and I realized this is one of the things we put in our course. If you go to learn.moneyguy.com, we actually have a deep dive course to make sure we clarify this point. But I, it was... An engineer, she raised her hand and um, she goes, hey, um, it seems really cruel and kind of selfish that I'm saving all this money. If I'm saving 35, 40 percent, I'm not even funding my kids college. What am I doing here? And I was like, no, 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 we need to clarify this. And I think this is where Houston, him and his spouse are already saving greater than 35 percent, but yet they think they're stuck at step six because they haven't maxed out their 401k. Max 401k is doing a lot, that language of Max Your 401k is doing a lot of heavy lifting because it could have several different meanings. When I hear Max 401k, and I think this is the problem Houston is having, he's hearing 20500 for him and maybe 20500 for their spouse. But that's not, I mean, if you think about it in terms of financial order of operations, our aspirational goal for you is to get you to 25% of your gross income working for you through a savings rate of 25%. So... There's a chance, because we did an example, I think, in the course, where if you make your household makes less than $80,000 a year, there's a chance you could be saving and investing 25% of your income, and you're not going to reach the $20,500. Right. Yeah, so then what do you Does do? Does that mean you, you can't go right? No, that means you can definitely go to step seven, hyperaccumulation, which that whole purpose of hyperaccumulation is where you're now starting to think about hey, I don't want to make sure that I'm not saving only in retirement assets because at some point I'd like to be able to pay cash for cars. I'd like to make sure I have liquidity in case you know some uncertain thing comes my way or I want to have take advantage of an investment opportunity of buying real estate or you know or doing something else like that. I need to have different structures. I need to have after-tax money. I need to have tax-deferred like your employer matching, your traditional 401k. I need to have tax-free, which is your Roth. So that's why we say once you're saving 25% of your gross income, you can graduate from step six, even if you haven't reached the maximum, the annual limit that the government allows of $20,500. i am even going to say you can graduate past step seven if you're saving 25% and you've gone through the efforts of looking to make sure you have the bridge account, meaning the after tax, you've maximized the, stru the structure between tax-free and tax-deferred to step eight. So just in case Houston has children or they have other goals they want to be saving for, you can start doing these things because you've already kind of paid yourself first. And that's the most important thing is you have the behavior that creates success and wealth of paying yourself first. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Um, that was a fantastic question, Houston. And if you're watching this and you're thinking, okay, this is step seven, what are these steps? These are our nine tried and true steps called the financial order of operations going to help you maximize the money that you have and know exactly what to do with your next dollar. And if you want a deep dive, like Brian just mentioned, we have a whole course in which he kind of actually breaks that down even further about how to know when to move to which step and how to customize it for your situation. You can go to learn.moneyguide Dot com and sign up for that course. You get all the video content, all the homework content. You also get access to our Facebook group where there's a bunch of other financial mutants in there discussing, you know, how to figure this out for their own life. All these financial questions. People are 
you know, sharing stories, sharing how they do it. It's a really great place to expand upon this knowledge as well. So learn.moneyguy.com if you're interested in that.